back by this band. And honestly, when I started covering this band, I actually liked them. I actually was a big fan of this band. I still like some elements of them. X was not one of them. Um, and I actually had some genuine respect for this band because they had some hard rocking moments. They were actual, actually a genuine, real, no BS band. Except for Axel's vocals, but of course that is an exception. You know, I could forgive Axel for his vocals for a few years when he was in his prime. But this is not a prime moment for Axel. Um, and I'm saying Axel because it's basically the Axel Rose project. That's probably what I'm gonna name this video. Uh, Axel Democracy <laughs> by the Axel Rose Project or something, fuck me all. And by all these jokes I'm making about the band, you can probably expect my rating for this album already. But let's dive into the record to kind of dissect it right here. So this is their sixth studio album and um, yeah, their sixth. And it's actually, if you really look at it, their third album um, and that is because um, their debut album, their double album, Use Your Illusion and this album, 17 years later, almost two decades. So um, this was a long awaited album for fans. If you're not counting Spaghetti Incidents because that's a covers album. Um, you had to wait 17 years for this album, which is a lot, and I've never listened to it, because uh, the moments that I heard from this album were just really generic, really dumb, really dull, and just didn't interest me in the slightest. So, this was just an album that I knew was bad, people say it's bad, and I, you know, I read that it's bad. Not everybody agrees with me on that because hardcore fans and critics actually praise this album or actually like this album. Actually, if you go to Wikipedia, it has positive reviews for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you know, to just get this out of the way, I don't like the band anymore. I just think that Axel is such a fucking dick. And yeah, you know, I do like some elements about the band, but just Axel being a dick and just. You know, the direction of the band, everyone leaving, I just don't like that, you know, I just, just don't like that about the band. N nobody likes it about the band, so there we go. The album is 71 minutes long and 18 seconds. And actually people were expecting a, a good album from this. You know, Axel's a perfectionist and people were actually expecting a good record in 15, 17 years, almost two decades. And I just cannot believe that, because how do you expect a good record out of this, really? You know, because it's been 70 years by a hard rock band. You know, if you have like a progressive band, I'm not going to name any names because it's obvious. And they've always been great, they, they've left on a great note. And um, they're probably going to come back with a great album. It's probably what I think, but... If you leave for so long and for so long and all your members are leaving and you left on a really sour note, you yeah, you know you have a band, I'm not gonna name them because it's kind of disgusting with talking about Guns N' Roses. That's how much I hate them now. Uh, but you actually have one band that left on a really sour note and great came back with a great comeback album. Arguably the best comeback album of all time. Um, but not everybody is like that, and Guns had the potential to come back, but they just never did. And if you look at the recording, the recording of this album, there's so many things wrong with this record. This record was a decade in development, so X was just basically, you know, um, living off of past material already in the 90s, because 91 Illusion Records came out, that's basically all he did that decade. 
members left in 97 and then he uh, began recording the album because all the members thought fuck it let's let's leave let's dip because there's n there's no uh, driving force in this band anymore spaghetti instance was a flop nobody liked it it was shit um yeah and actually i think that spaghetti incident is better than this one because shit honestly and yeah me saying that the rating is pretty obvious by this point but uh, we can go into the track listing a bit more, I guess. Um, but it's just such a fucking abysmal record, really. You know, for Axel to fucking have this record a decade in development. And then hyping it up for almost two years. You know, because he was done recording it February 2007. And, um, fucking hell. Uh, he released it a year later in November, so that is one year and nine months. Yeah, fucking hell, man. That's like really, you know, you want to hype your own record up for like fucking two years. Pfft, Jesus Christ. I, I, yeah, and I believe actually that's Blink 182 or no, 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 the Offspring. The Offspring actually made like a, a troll joke to uh, so Axel like, oh, we're gonna name our next album Chinese Democracy, and Axel was actually already suing them for not getting the joke, fucking dipshit. Um, yeah, that was actually pretty funny. That's that's probably the best Offspring moment, really. And you know, me saying that's yeah, I mean, they're pretty shit, so there we go. Uh, that's really their best moment, and it's not even music for that, so there we go. And actually tried to sue them, sue them, but that's not possible because the album was not released under the Chinese democracy name then, because it was, I believe, a joke in 2006. So Axel's being a dick again, once again, to Offspring, out of all bands, you know, fucking hell. Um, yeah, it's just like, really, do you really want to go here? Like, fucking hell, man. It was just really a low blow, it was just a joke and he tried to sue them although he didn't have a record out named Chinese Democracy up to that point. So it was just fucking pointless really. And um, the album is 30 million in production, 30 million dollars in production. So it was just fucking, uh, it was just a waste of money really. Um, the record is labeled hard rock, industrial rock, electronic rock, and nu metal. Uh, I can see the hard rock part. There are some hard rock moments in there. Industrial rock. There are some like scratches and like I believe actual listen to '90s nails when the Illusion records, you know, ended. He listened a shitload of fucking uh, the '90s nails and bands in that nature. And I love '90s nails. Don't get me wrong, but. It's just not a good combination to have Nine Inch Nails and a Hard Rock Band together. It just doesn't fit. It just doesn't. Fucking hell. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, a new metal, I guess, since it was recorded in the new metal days. So there are some new metal influences on there. And uh, yeah, I mean, new metal is fucking shit. I mean, nobody really has to tell you that, but there we go. Uh, so all these things in consideration, the album is pretty bad so far already with, with me not even talking about a single song, so we go. And I've actually like noted down all of these songs in to kind of like, um, I, I've, I've noted all the songs and have, you know, I have a title for them, so I'm gonna name them off. And I've named Chinese Democracy the opening track, I've named it Generic Hard Rock because you have this one riff that goes like, you know, it's just the same fucking riff over and over again. And Axel just fucking whining. Um, and Anton with an iron fist. It, it is just like really generic. It's mainly Axel talking about ending, ending the Chinese democracy with violence. That's basically what he's on about here. Um, and it's honestly one of the best tracks of the album. That's the saddest part about it, really. Um, then we have Sheckler's Revenge, and this is just I've I've noted noise, and it really is. It's three and a half minutes of noise, just guitar scratches, just 
fucking layers of noise over noise to each other. It's just a bad track. It's just fucking abysmal. It's just a bad track. So there we go. And I've actually um, said to better the third track. I've actually said this is the best song, and it honestly is the best song because she has some creative question mark creative uh, guitarist, you know, the dun 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 dun. dun. You know, some pauses here and there. Those are nice pauses, I, I suppose, but. Uh, besides that, it really goes downhill from there. Vocals by XR are just fucking abysmal again. I mean, his vocals were never really that good to be honest, but especially on this track. Or especially on later tracks, Jesus Christ. Actually, he has one of his best vocal performances on there, and it's still fucking abysmal, so... That's just say enough. Um, and then we have Street of Dreams, and um, I wrote it's cringy Axel on this one. It's actually pretty funny to note all of these fucking things. Um, but yeah, Cringy Axel just... Uh, he tries too hard to kind of pay a message to say, um, Oh, we have the Street of Dreams and we can make a troop, we work together, you know? Still, it's just so fucking bullshit, really. Um, his vocals are just even worse on there than better. Um, it just sounds so cheesy, it sounds so dumb, it sounds so over the top. And this is actually one of the highest points of the record, really. <sighs> Jesus Christ. And up to this point, I was really tired of the record already, but we have like 10 more songs to go, so fucking no. And If The World is... Um, I wrote a cheesy porno because it basically um, is like really seductive, really like just cheesy at the beginning. It sounds like... You know, a cheesy porno is about to start or something. Fuck, you know, and then the song just goes on and on and on forever. This ex this song is fucking five minutes. It doesn't sound that long, but if you're listening to Chinese Democracy, that is a fucking abysmal time. And it's actually one of the shortest songs, so there we go. And speaking of abysmal, we have There Was A Time, which is the longest song of the album. Um, and I wrote it filler. This is just a fucking filler tune. Um, and actually, actually, um, yeah, I, I do have one positive about this album that it just, you know, um, not one song is above the seven minute mark, which is nice, but that's really the only positive thing I have to say about it. Fuck, you know, I, I, this is just a filler tune. It goes nowhere, just. It's just fucking pointless, it's fit, I just, yeah, move on. Uh, then we have Catcher in the Eye and I've wrote it forgettable because I just cannot remember the shit out of this. It's a centerpiece of the record. Um, you know, because I think the high points of this record are at the beginning and at the ending of the album and at the, at the middle of the record, it just goes nowhere. It just goes absolutely nowhere. Um, you know, the... The beginning tracks and the closing tracks have some catchy elements to them. They have some commercial sound to them, but the the middle the, the middle side of this record is just fucking forgettable shit. And then we have scraped, and I've wrote it actually to this uh, to number eight scraped indeed because it's just it should have it shouldn't even be on there. It's a short track of the album, goes nowhere. Axel's fu fucking crying like a dying cat on there. It's just it's just bad. It's just bad. <laughs> Just the bad song. Uh, then we have Riot and the Bedou Bedouins. Um, and I've actually wrote a bad trip on this one because it really sounds like Axel's going through a bad trip or something. Like he, he took some LSD, he listened to some Nine Inch Nails, and he actually like tried to uh, you know try to imitate My World once again, like a My World Part Two. And actually, then a My World Part Two is actually. Um, Better than all of these songs, honestly. That's how shit this album is. Um, and yeah, this is just abysmal. It's really forgettable. It sounds like Axel's trying to imitate or trying to replicate the the golden years of Guns, the the eighties and early nineties, I suppose. But it just doesn't work. It just sounds dated. It sounds. Forgettable, it just sounds like you know, he tries to be uh, 20 again, but he's fucking 50 then, or he's 50 now. Nah, uh, who, who fucking cares? 
Uh, then we have Sorry and I wrote it on this track. Dreadful, it just goes on forever. It just it's six minutes long, it's just doesn't deliver anything, you know. Exo Ex Ex is actually one of the worst lyrics ever here. I, I believe he said, I'm feeling sorry for you, not sorry for me for, I believe he's talking about his fame, talking about that, uh, you know, oh, I have like 30 million in this album, you, you can stop me, you son of a bitch. And I'm like, really? Are you really going there? That's just a low blow. It's just a low blow song, it's just the lyrics are shit. The song is dreadful, the title is shit, so. Horrible track. Uh, then we have IRS, which is basically political shite, you know, Axel talking about, uh, I believe, politics and the IRS, you know, just talking crap out of his fucking mouth. He's just such a fucking hypocrite, man, you know, talking about all oh, this and this, this is wrong with the world, while well, he's one of the biggest problems in the music industry. Enough said. <laughs> and then we have uh, Medica, Madagascar, which is uh, actually named this track Maquette Did It, not Died uh, It or however you want to say it, you know, funny joke, fucking hell. Um, yeah, this track, honestly, it's just wor worst vocal performance by Axel question mark, his vocals are fucking terrible on this track, it actually rivals, um, how's that one song called again, on the Spaghetti Incident. Uh, since I don't have you, fucking abysmal vocal on that track, man. But, um, but yeah, on this track is actually ten times worse. You know, it just sounds like he's screwing, and um, he actually like does some key changes towards the the later section, the middle section, and the ending section. He actually does some, um, you know, some higher key changes. Which I hate, I hate of course, it just doesn't go anywhere and it's just fucking abysmal, it's just another abysmal song. Vo arguably the worst vocal performance by Axel ever, you know, if he's gonna make another record, fuck no. Uh, probably not, he's just gonna live off uh, Appetite again. Literally just released a uh, lock and load or something, the fucking, fucking sellout, Jesus Christ. Trying to leech off, off of your debut, man. That's so fucking sad. I mean, he's already doing that, so just fucking stop. Literally, the people that praise that album fucking praise it because, oh, it's really genius and no dipshit. It's basically fucking rehearsals of the Appetite Days and it's GNR Lives. That's it. And some fucking illusion songs. You know, no wonder the fucking Spaghetti Incident didn't make it on the album. Fucking hell. There's a reason they tried to hide that. There's a reason. <sighs> make uh, make a new record again, Jesus Christ. You, you know, Exodus is basically taking a shit on your desk. He's saying like, buy this piece of shit and he's never making another record again. Because he knows the spark is gone. The peak is gone. He doesn't gonna. He, he isn't gonna recreate that lining in the bottle effect. That that was the debut, and he's never gonna try it. That's really fucking sad. But just fucking end it. Don't continue your sad, sappy, pointless, fucking dried out career. Just fucking make an end of it. Really, it's so fucking sad. It really is. And um, you know, I'm having a go at the band now, but. Mainly having to go at Axel because even Slash and Duff didn't really want to come back. You know, they just thought the money was tight, the money was nice. You know, Axel was sharing a bit of his money again, although he's a fucking billionaire up to this point. Axel <sighs> Axel Rose, one of the worst pieces of shit ever out there, man. Jesus Christ. Um, and then we have worst ballad ever. Oh, I mean, this I love. Is it the worst ballad ever? It's, prob it's probably not. You have some really bad uh, ballads out there. Some really sappy, cheesy ones, but... You know, compared to a fucking A Strange or, you know, um, a November Rain, it doesn't even come close. It really doesn't. Um, this song is just... Just way too hard to have a good guitar solo on there. People actually say that this is the best song of the album. And although it's not one of the worst songs, it's definitely not one of the best for sure. It's just like, it's way too preachy, the ballad is fucking shite, um, 
extra vocals are abysmal, the solo is all over the place, it tries to have a solo, then it close, uh, then it slows down again, then it has kind of a breakdown. This song is just a fucking mess, and although it's not the worst track, it's just is a fucking mess, and it's actually the only solely written song by Axl Rose, so one written track by Axl Rose, one written track, that's just... That's horrible. That's actually, that's actually horrible. This is the only song he actually wrote it in 15 years. In 70 years actually, because Spaghetti Incident is a fucking chorus album. So, Axl Rose, fuck you, fucking die, you piece of shit. And I'm not joking. If you're genuinely making one song in 70 years, almost two decades, you're an actual piece of shit, you really are. No side projects, not anything, just 70 years of nothing. And he co wrote it everything else. Really. You know, um, you can't say Axel wrote it this entire. Oh, he actually did all the lyrics written by Axel Rose. I guess, but this is the only one he solely wrote it, so fuck off, piece of shit. Jesus Christ. And it's not even a good album, so fuck off. Jesus Christ, and then we have Prostitute. Um, honestly, if you really give this album a chance, or if you give this song a chance, then there are some genuine, like, gems on this album. Well, I'm gonna take that back. If you take, you know, if you give this album a chance and you actually listen to it, it's not Old Guns. It's not the Old Guns and Rose, it's just actual trying to kind of uh, replicate the Appetite and Illusion Days, which is not even close. And I, I, I want to say he kind of you know tries to um, he tries to replicate the success of Appetite on the first side, and then he kind of tries to replicate the second side for Illusion. So it just never happens. It just doesn't work. It's just shit. Uh, prostitute is just really sappy, really blown out of proportions. It's really fucking um, just everything that I don't like about it. That really, it's just fucking sappy. It's cheesy. It's overblown. It's overproduced. It's just piece of shit. It's even that title, prostitute, really like fucking hell. You know. You're writing this record for like 17 years and Chinese democracy is the best thing that you can think about. It's just really... You know, he did like fucking four years about the Illusion records. And that's a cool title. You know, Epitaph for Destruction, that's a cool title. Generalize is kind of generic, but it was accurate for the time. And Use Your Illusion. Sounds good. Sounds like a good album and we're decent albums. So there we go. A lot of filler on it, but... They were decent. They were they were decent albums. But honestly, Prostitute is just a bad song. It's just a bad album title or a bad song title. Album title shit is what changes the market. Nobody wants to hear that. You know, people just want to rock out to your music, and they don't want to listen to Giants Democracy. Nobody asks for oh, Axel, talk about the democracy in China. Please, we want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that, honestly. Nobody asked for it, nobody wanted it, except for your dumbass, Jesus Christ. So, this track, it just ends on a really sappy, like, harmonized symphony or something, like, or are you going to heaven or something, like, Axel's the fucking, um, the heaven gate uh, waiter, or however you want to say it. It sounds like he wants to be heavenly on this track, but... It just doesn't work, you know, it ends on a fucking, on a string quartet, on a symphony, or however you want to call it, but it just ends really cheesy, it ends really pointless, it's not rock and roll, it's just Axel being a pretentious dick, it really is. Uh, so this record is just overall piece of shit. Um, I think that there were some genuine, decent moments on Chinese Democracy and Better. Those are really the only two songs I give a shit about, and even those two songs are kind of shit, so there we go. Uh, Shackler's Revenge was just noise to me, Three of Dreams was just abysmal for actual vocals, which he always was. If the world is fitter, there was a time was forgettable, Catch on your eyes, just what are we even talking about, Scraped. 
why didn't you scrape, scrape it off the record because it's just fucking pointless right and uh, be doing however you want to say it worst track of the album for sure just fucking nothing sorry it's just just abysmal just fucking goes on forever irs is just political nonsense you know actually being a hypocrite madagascar is just Axel uh, screaming like a dying cat again, Jesus man. Um, and this all of us probably with together with process with two of the <sighs> fucking uh, two of the I don't want to say it, but two of the how am I gonna say it? you know because I don't want to use best in Chinese promotion in the same sentence because that's really not the case here. But those two songs are really um, two of the most at least you tried songs, you know, they, he tried, he miserably failed, but he still tried on those two tracks. And honestly, those are the only two tracks that really, I believe they play really, you know, Giant Democracy, a better, I believe those are really the only four that they play. So those are, I'm not going to say the best songs, but those are the least worst songs of the album. And the other, and the other 10, actually, the other 10 songs are, are just pure shit. And those four songs are, eh. Those are, you can be asked with them. So, so fucking hell. Um, I'm just fucking speechless on this record, really. Um, Chinese democracy is kind of generic, but it's still heartwarming. Still reminds me of the appetite days. Barely though, but it does remind me of it. Uh, better. Is alright. It's probably the best song of the album. It's still pretty bad. Madagascar is. Uh, yeah, it's just about, it's arguably the worst track of the song, but actually a Martin Luther King sample, so there we go. And this love probably has the best guitar uh, solo on here, but it's just noise to me, it's just messy. And Prostitute is probably the most, it's probably one of the only songs that actually tries to be a song, but it doesn't sound like Guns N' Roses, it really doesn't sound like, yeah, I don't want to hear a fucking string chord, I don't want to hear a fucking symphony when I listen to this band. Fucking hell, man. You know, I'm gonna get listen to the fucking Beethoven if I want that. Just fuck off. Uh, so this is arguably one of the worst albums I've heard so far on this channel. There are worse albums out there. I know that, but this is probably the lowest rating I'm gonna give a record so far. So I'm gonna give this record a 3 out of 10. Um, me giving it a 3 is only because the title track is has its moments, better is, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard, it's actually the best song of this album, which doesn't, which doesn't say much, um, and This A Love was alright, This A Love was an alright track, but it was really messy and all over the place, but it did have some alright uh, guitar moments, but it actually sounded like shit on it, so those are really the three only redeemable, redeemable songs of the record, and even those three are don't even touch the glory days of uh, guns, really. So it was just fucking pointless to have a Martin Luther King Jr. Spe uh, sample on there. Fucking pointless. And the rest of the album is just pure shit. So overproduced piece of shit. It's 30 million uh, dollars in production. Waste of space, honestly. Waste of money. Just waste of a waste of time. You know, a fucking decades. Jeez, a fucking decade in production. 30 million in in production value and have this result man it's just so fucking sad it really is talk about best prime jesus christ so let me know what you think about this record i've been going on for like half an hour which is this is arguably also my longest album review ever but that's just because i've so many issues with this record so many issues with this band in general jesus christ uh, so let me know what you think about it. Uh, in my opinion, the worst Guns N' Roses album yet. If they're gonna release another one, then that's probably gonna be the worst one. Then, that you know, Slash and Duff are back in the band again, so they're probably gonna contrib contribute contribute some uh, songwriting credits. So there we go. So, so that record will probably be better, but Guns is probably never gonna release that record because you know. Why release a new record if you can uh, live off your past glory, you know? You know what I mean? Fucking hell. So, fuck this band, fuck this album. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Uh, follow me on Metal Storm on Music and on my other channel, uh, Shadowrunners. 
is that I'm gonna post on that, so there we go. Um, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos, like and let me know what you think about this record in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you, take care, peace to all you guys out there, and fuck Axel Rose, the Axel Rose project. <sighs> fuck Axel.